our first topic, which is Dustin Timberlake, who I don't know if it should come as a surprise to anybody, but his latest album is a flop. So apparently everything JT thought his album was turned out not to be the case because based on its chart performance, people didn't care enough to support it. Now, according to Consequence Sound, of Sound, sorry, everything I thought it was, the most recent release from Justin Timberlake has fallen off the Billboard 200 charts after just four weeks. This makes the LP his worst performing project by a large margin of 15 weeks following its release on March 15th. By comparison, 2018's Man of the Woods was still hovering in the number 11 spot on the same chart in its fourth week. In 2013, the 2020 experience was ranked as the number one album of the year by, um, according to Billboard 200, and remained on the chart to such an extent in its first year that its release, after its release, that the LP was ranked as the 142nd most popular album of 2014. Well, I think that's the last time Justin's career was popping, was 10 years ago. After that, when he tried to go all Duck Dynasty on us, people just didn't care enough to you know, support the music afterwards. So it says several factors could have contributed to the lack of staying power for this project. Yeah, now they basically say all the shit I've been saying for the longest, but let's entertain it. It says, with the primary reason being it's just not that interesting, despite boasting an in-sync reunion. In its in his review, our, um, the website's writer, one of the writers for the website by the name of Paolo Ragusa, criticized the overstuffed nature of the project while also noting everything I thought it was feels less like a terrible Justin Timberlake album and more like wasted potential. Man of the Woods was terrible, but at least he took a risk. This one is fine, frictionless, and overwhelmingly safe. And I think that's what it was also was the fact that he took a risk with Man of the Woods because for all throughout his solo career, you know, he basically would latch on to Timberland mostly. I mean, he worked with Pharrell and Max Martin, a couple of other people over the years, but for the most part, Timbaland was his go-to producer. And they would come out and they would work a lot of magic. When he came out with Justified and then he came out with the 2020 Experience and then Future Sex Love Sounds, I'm not going to hold him on that, but it was like, look, all three of those albums, it had some bops on it. It was iconic. They, You know, I felt like Timbaland gave just in a lot of his best work and his best production because you know when you working with you know let's call it what it is when you start working with when you a black producer working with one of the biggest white artists at the time you already know you're going to collect a good coin out of Justin Timberlake so y'all collaboration is definitely going to elevate you as a producer and elevate Justin Timberlake as a solo act and for a while it worked until Man of the Woods came out then he was trying to switch it up he's like okay I already you know I got invited to the cookout because apparently you know black people love inviting white people blue eyed soul singers to the cookout you know anytime they just look in y'all direction and just give a little yang yang y'all automatically giving out certificates to the cookout and invitations I don't know why but y'all like to do it just like y'all about to forgive Miss Kunda Owens just because you know all that shit she said over the years but this ain't about her maybe I'll save her for when we talk about Amanda Seals because she was brought up in that interview please hold <laughs> so they did what they did and they worked it out and all the other stuff and they and they made magic then he tried to go I guess because he had squeezed all the juice out of the lemon he was like you know what I want to take a risk and do something different so now I want to embrace you know, my roots growing up in Tennessee and being a white singer and all the other stuff. I've already, you know, squeezed all the lemon out of the hip hop, you know, situation, an urban situation, being that blue eyed soul singer. And then I'm going to go over here and do this. But the album flopped. But I do applaud him for taking a risk with that. Then it was like, you know what? Because that album didn't do really well. And even down to the Super Bowl, because they were like, you know, people were still mad at him over that. They was like, well, wait a minute. Now, how y'all invite this heifer? to come perform at the Super Bowl by himself, especially after what he did to Janet. But y'all still ain't invite Janet back. Y'all still haven't given her the opportunity even after y'all, you know, that whole documentary and everything came out where they was like openly admitted that it was like, you know, Les Moonves had it out for her and thank God he got his karma. That Les Moonves had it out for her and he wanted to really stick it to Janet in, in that whole situation where it was clear racism and misogyny that was shrouded in that whole situation. But it wasn't just her. She ain't pull her own titty out. I do believe that that was supposed to be a part of the act, but Justin got ambitious, over-ambitious, and revealed a whole lot more than what was supposed to be revealed. But instead of them both getting, you know, 
taking the fall or getting a ver you know a full on public lashing. She was the one that really lost a lot and was blacklisted for a long period of time. And her career, in my opinion, even though, yes, Jenna is an icon in the eyes of a lot of us, myself included, her career, in my opinion, still has not recovered. And I feel like now with everything that's going on, this is his karma, because it's not only the whole Janet situation, but over the years, the things he did to Britney. And when Britney came out and, and wrote that memoir, I feel like she was finally vindicated. So I feel like that also hurt him with this with this album. And he really thought, oh, I could just brush it off. And I was like, child, don't do it. Because I knew that it was like, your timing is bad. But, you know, when these white male and y'all privilege, y'all really think like Teflon, like Teflon shit don't stick to y'all. He got a rude awakening because nobody cared enough about this album. But, you know, whenever I bring stuff up that based off of, you know, me assessing the room, and the timing and all the other stuff, because, you know, us Virgos, we all about, you know, st strategy and assessing things and timing and when you're going to put out some shit. We could smell the shit a mile away. So we try to tell y'all, we we, uh, we try to be the soothsayers. <laughs> but a lot of times it's like, y'all be looking at, oh, you're, you're a hater. You know what you're talking about. And then I got to bring this story to y'all. And I was like, you know, I tried to tell you. Y'all ain't want to listen. And so with the whole thing about what happened with him and Britney, releasing your album two months after all that shit came out from the memoir was not the smart thing to do. Or not even coming out, but just announcing it and rolling out the whole campaign and then doing like live performances where you were doing like all these free shows. You did one in Tennessee, you did one in New York, you were doing all these different places. And then he thought by trotting out in sync, that was going to be enough for people to come and support it. And I didn't like that because it felt like you was dangling a carrot in front of us and being like, oh yeah, look, it's in sync. But it's like, you know, you need them just like they need you. Y'all pretty much need each other to excel. Cause in sync ain't really doing nothing. What else the rest of them doing? The only one I'd be hearing about is doing shit is Lance. And that's because Lance is doing a lot of behind the scenes things. And was like in the, you know, he was also in the, the gay bar entrepreneur space. We talked about that not a couple well, a couple episodes ago with that whole drama that went down at heart, which he no longer is a part of, but I think he still owns rock or is a co owner of Rocco's, which I believe is literally across the they're all in the same area, West Hollywood. But um, you know, the incident with the uh with I guess it was a makeup artist who was assaulted by one of the um security guards that was working that club. So he's about to go on tour with this Forget Tomorrow World Tour. I don't know how well the tickets are selling. I haven't looked on Ticketmaster. I haven't looked in all the other places. So I don't necessarily know if his show is doing well. And I'm, child, let me tell you a little secret. So a lot of times when, when tours ain't really, or concerts aren't really selling, sometimes an arena will take a hit. And they'll do a whole thing where it's like, we got to sell out those seats. So... Free seat, free tickets get thrown and put put out to the people to get them to come in and see the show. I didn't mention this before. They did it with Nicki Minaj. They recently did it with um, Davido at Madison Square Garden. So I know they took a hit. Um, and a couple of others they do it with. Where there's some people who really have a hard time selling out tickets. A lot of times they'll buy free tickets and I have to give them out to people. So I don't know. We'll have to see how well Justin Timberlake's tour is doing. Or if he might be in the same boat as Jennifer Lopez because he's supposed to be doing two nights. I believe in June. So that's like, what, almost two months um from now? So they said the tour is scheduled to kick off later this month in, in Vancouver. So his tour is about to start maybe this week or next week. I don't know. I don't know the exact date, but apparently he's about to go on tour this, um, at the end of the month. And we're all at the, we're all at, we are at the, damn, I can't miss feet. We are at the end of the month because today is the 25th of April. So, look, I feel like at this point, this is an opportunity for him to promote the tour harder because at this point, the album is not albuming and nobody cares. So you might as well just put that shit to bed. But I'm sure what he's going to do is he's going to, I don't think he's going to pull a Jennifer Lopez and make it a whole greatest hits tour. I really feel that he's going to just adamantly con continue putting the music from this new album and he's going to, you know, 
interlink it with this tour. So I bet we will be hearing those songs. And I'm sure that the people who ain't really caring enough about them songs probably going, those are probably going to be the moments where people sitting their ass down. People want to hear Sexy Back. They want to hear, um, what was some, what's some other song? Cry Me a River. Like, he want, they want to hear those songs. They don't care about whatever the name of, of the, I don't even remember what, Selfish. Nobody want to hear that shit. <laughs> the only selfish song I want to hear is the Britney Spears track from Finn Fatale that was never a damn single and it should have been. So that was my shit. But anyway, so I, in my opinion, just to wrap this up, I just feel like this is his opportunity to promote this tour harder than the la the latest album. I feel like at this point in his career, you know, he'll always have success as a live act. There's no taking away from that because Justin Timberlake has been performing since he was a kid. So he'll always have success in one way or another. But will he be able to have that same success, like have it stagnant at the level of like a Taylor Swift or something? No, I don't see that. I don't feel like he's going to, he's a, someone that can grow his audience. I feel like his audience is stagnant. It is where it is. And he's going to just have to continue to hold on to that audience that he has, which is, I guess, like the girls that grew up listening to NSYNC and the gays. So you got them soccer moms and the homosexuals with a lot of money who apparently like Justin Timberlake. I'm not one of them. I don't particularly care for him. I mean, I like some of his songs, but I just, then I, I just over the years of me doing celebrity news and gossip and following him, I just don't like the way he moves, especially when it comes to whenever he's caught up in some shit, how he likes to throw the people that he had a hand in getting caught up in some shit with under the bus to save his own ass. So that's why I don't particularly care for him. But I also feel like he needs to stop trotting out NSYNC only when he wants to use it to promote his material and actually get back with the boy band and not only release a reunion album, but tour with them as well. So I think after this, maybe what he needs to do is reunite with NSYNC. Um, they need to do record a whole album, kind of like with New Kids on the Block. They got a new album coming out too. I don't know if there's people enough that care about a New Kids on the Block record, but I'm sure they have their fan base that'll go out and support it. Do I think they're gonna make um sell a lot of units and all that other stuff? Probably not, because I don't know many people who still listen to kid, New Kids on the Block. New Kids on the Block was not my demographic. They was way before me in my time. I was I grew up in the era of like NSYNC, Battery Boys, Britney, you know, all, and all of those people. I was from that you know, boy band, girl group era. Like when the Spice Girls of them started becoming popular and stuff, that's like when I started being able to use my allowance to buy CDs and all that other stuff. And yeah, I was there during Spice Mania and buying up all those CDs and shit. Cause that was like, I begged my parents to take me to the store so I could buy that album when it dropped. But anyway, so, um, yeah, so as I, I feel like that's at that point because, or do a residency. Did he ever do a residency or is that just Usher? But I feel like maybe he's probably another one who's who will probably be better off, especially because you have Jessica Biel who ain't working. Why would she need to? She's married to you. And um, you got the two kids with her. So maybe what you need to do is just release, you know, do something with NSYNC, reunite with them, y'all record, y'all go on a little tour, whatever. That will definitely sell out. Because I know that people, you know, the, the fans that grow with that, they love that nostalgia. So do that, basically. But anyway, what do y'all think about this story? Are y'all shocked did? Are y'all surprised that Justin Timberlake's latest album flopped? I mean, you know for the longest for me talking about this and Jennifer Lopez that I'm not surprised at all. But if you are, and let me know what you guys think in the comments down below.